I'm Adrian Schneer, Advancement Coach and Strategist, Lawyer and Professor, and you're listening to the Advancement Spot Podcast, the podcast all about academic and professional skills, strategy, and mindset to help you make big moves to achieve a life beyond your wildest dreams. If you're looking to accomplish more and take your next steps with supportive and experience-informed strategies, look no further. Let's get started. Hi, welcome back to the Advancement Spot Podcast. I'm your host, Adrian Schneer. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to spend some here with me. Today, we'll be exploring self-care, this big, ominous term that is often equated with bubble baths and spa days. Actually, it's not so ominous. There is an over $10 billion per year self-care industry that strategically markets self-care as big indulgences, weekends away, and cucumbers on your eyes. While those things might be nice, alone, they're not the things that will help us decompress, de-stress, and find alignment within ourselves in the long run. And let's face it, these experiences can be expensive and sometimes we need to decompress when we get back. Ever heard anyone say, gosh, after this vacation, I need a vacation? And when we see other people indulging in these experiences, we might feel envious, like we wish we could go away for that weekend and have someone give us a facial with those cucumbers. Another problem with these indulgence-based experiences is that they're not accessible to all. These experiences are accessible to people who can afford them. And let's face it, as students and young professionals, sometimes our budgets are tight. We have student loans, tuition, tech needs, transportation needs, food needs, and often we're helping to provide for our families or we're providing for families of our own. So, Let me provide some insight as to why I don't think we need to subscribe to the $10 billion per year self-care industry to take care of ourselves, to rest, rejuvenate, and recharge in a sustainable way in the long term. At the core of the self-care industry, what are the feelings that the advertisements promote to us? Calmness, decompression from everyday life stressors, relaxation, rejuvenation, restoration, all of the things that we want to feel regularly. So will one weekend away give us that in the long term? Probably not. Will many weekends away give us that? Also probably not. Why? Because in those in-between times, in those days and weeks and maybe even months between these indulgences, we have to deal with stressors, with life, and we have to develop the skills and abilities to be able to rest and restore ourselves without opening our wallets. Developing the skill of self-care will actually save you money time, and energy sustainably. And yes, like everything else that we talk about here, self-care is a skill. And so we can develop this and build on it throughout the course of our lives and certainly throughout the course of our advancement. So let's start with redefining and reframing how we view self-care. And let's be honest, it's not taking a weekend away or going to get a manicure, though that may be part of it. We're getting deeper here. What is self-care really? Self-care is intentionally taking time to engage in sustainable, restorative activities that help you realign or maintain your alignment with yourself. Sustainable restoration. Alternatively, a main threat to your alignment and restoration is stress. Physical stress, emotional stress. Let's think, what are we putting into our bodies and minds that are causing stress on our systems? And how do we feel? likely burnt out or on our way there. So our self-care practices have to present opportunities to engage in activities that oppose stress and burnout. So with this understanding, how can we practice self-care? First, we want to include moments of rest and stillness in each day. In our world, often, success is viewed as busyness. But let me tell you something, you can be busy all day long, all week long, all month long, all year long, all life long. You can be busy and not advance, not make more money and not be happy. Busyness may be a great distraction to getting to know yourself and what you need, which is hard and sometimes scary work. Busyness also helps us feel like we're doing something, but it's not always what we need. I know that one of the main reasons that people don't get to know themselves and remain busy instead is that they are afraid to look inward for fear of what they might uncover. I've seen it. 
But what is on the other side of looking inward mindfully as part of a self-care practice is awareness. Bringing me to my next point. Awareness is vital to sustainable and restorative self-care. Awareness of how you feel and what you want. Awareness of how you think. I'll say that again. Awareness of how you think. Awareness of your thinking processes and what you're thinking. Meaning, are your thoughts productive or counterproductive? Do your thoughts help you to move forward or hold you back? Without an awareness of how you feel, how you think, and what you want, it is all too easy to slide into negative thoughts and people-pleasing mode, spending your time and energy on thoughts that are hurtful to you and on others' needs at the expense of your own. And I don't mean to suggest that we shouldn't help others. Of course we should. But you have to fill your cup first. If you haven't heard that phrase before, filling your own cup means that you have to set healthy boundaries for yourself. You're able to take care of yourself so that you have enough energy and presence for yourself before others. You can't pour from an empty cup. Part of life is that other people and other things will always require your energy and attention. But how you spend that energy and attention and the mindfulness that you attribute to the process is what dictates your practices for mental, emotional, and physical sustainability over time. This brings me to my next strategy for sustainable self-care. And this may be an unexpected one. Boundaries. Setting healthy boundaries for yourself and other people will help you to be able to have those moments of stillness and rest. Bringing an awareness to yourself, how you feel physically and mentally so that you know when you need to slow down for a minute. Do this with me for a second. I'm going to ask you a few questions to help you become aware of your mind, body, how you feel, and what you need. You can close your eyes if you want. Ground your feet, both feet on the ground. Take a breath. Focus on that breath moving in and out, in and out. Feel yourself sitting or standing, whatever position you're in. Feel your seat under you or feel your weight in your feet. How does your body feel? Agile or achy? Do you have any discomfort? How does your mind feel? At ease, sound, or stressed? How do your eyes feel? I know that's a strange one, but bear with me for a second. How do your eyes feel? Strained and stinging from staring at screens for too long? How does your back feel? Strained from sitting too long? Open your eyes. We've all been here and there is nothing wrong with you for feeling any way that you do. But bringing awareness to how you feel will give you insight into what you need. Maybe you need to stand up for a minute. Maybe you need to walk away from the computer for a minute and give your eyes a break. Maybe a 10-minute walk would help with those aches from sitting too long. Maybe that 10-minute walk would also help you to rest your eyes from screens, allowing your eyes to look further into the distance in natural light during a walk than at your desk. Just this one short exercise has helped you to bring awareness to how you feel, an act of self-care, free simple, and two minutes. And now you have really valuable information that you didn't have before. Information about how you feel, allowing you to move forward with naming what it is that you need. A walk, an intentional break, intentional rest, and maybe even sleep. Without bringing awareness to yourself, you wouldn't have this information. Or you would just ignore it and try to push through the way that you feel. And not that you need my permission, but you don't have to push through feeling miserable. Feeling miserable is not a necessary part of the advancement process. In fact, I would argue that feeling miserable actually hinders our advancement. You can absolutely start to take small steps to bettering how you feel. Just that moment of stillness, awareness, getting in touch with yourself is a big step and a great start. And this will help you set boundaries for yourself and other people. What are your priorities, commitments? How much energy do you have for your priorities and commitments? And are you included in this as a priority and commitment? Because if you don't prioritize yourself, who will? Prioritizing yourself, committing to investment in yourself. And investment doesn't always mean money. You can invest time into yourself. And this is extremely valuable. Investing in yourself will help you to realize your worth, the value of your time, 
and how you feel, helping you to also realize what boundaries you need to set for certain things or people. Now you might be thinking, I don't have time for a walk. I can't step away from my computer. I get it. I've been there. I still feel that way sometimes. But I also know that taking that step away, even just for a moment, actually helps with productivity. How often do we zone out while we're working on something, thinking that we have an inability to focus? Many times we just need an intentional break or some rest to restore us and our minds. Let me put it this way. The ROI or return on investment of rest and intentional breaks is significant. An investment in what, you might ask? Investment in yourself, in time for yourself. Once you intentionally invest in yourself with something like time, a few times a day, checking in with yourself, allowing yourself to feel the way you feel without judging yourself, bottling it up, or looking for an escape, you will be able to more intentionally rest and recharge. I talked about the intentionality of your breaks and activities in episode seven, so head there for more on this. But I'll add here that we also need to intentionally rest. And that looks different for different people. Maybe it's going for a drive. Maybe it is that weekend away. Maybe it is that manicure or pedicure or facial. But whatever it is, let it be your choice and let it be intentional. And put your phone away while you're participating in it. Let the seconds and minutes tick on and be present for them. Don't miss them by scrolling. Actually take the time. You're investing the time in the activity that you choose to do. So practice being present while you're participating in it. And here's how. Look around. Realize your surroundings. Look at the details around you. Be still. Feel yourself in your seat or whatever position you're in. Let your senses guide you. What do you see, feel, hear, smell, and taste? Starting with the most basic of feelings by letting our senses guide us is a really simple and easy way to start to get grounded. You're taking the time to engage in these activities here, so be present. Don't waste the minutes scrolling. So we've unpacked this big term, self-care. And we have reviewed four key strategies to participate in self-care for free. Would regular weekends away be nice? Yes, of course. Are they always possible or accessible to everyone? No, certainly not. And so it's a good thing that self-care doesn't rely on getting away. We need to rid ourselves of the pressure that self-care means that we have to indulge in expensive experiences in order to take care of ourselves. Just the opposite, in my opinion. At the foundation of self-care is the ability to check in with ourselves, invest time in ourselves, and not feel guilty about it. After all, if we want to keep doing our work and building the impact that we want to have, we have to prioritize our health and our own personal sustainability. You can absolutely do everything that you want to do. You just have to prioritize yourself in the process. So it may start really small, but small wins are still wins. You may start small with the exercise that we started out with, closing your eyes, inhaling, exhaling, and just realizing how you feel. This takes all of about 15 seconds. Then maybe you realize what you need and slowly you begin to prioritize time for yourself each day. You realize your needs and you set your boundaries so that you can actually sustain yourself and your health. And you practice being present using your senses to guide you. Remember, you don't need to make a massive groundbreaking change all in one sitting. It's not going to happen. Consistency over perfection, meaning that you don't need to be perfect at this. You don't have to look like someone looks on social and you don't have to feel like you think others feel. Be open to the way that you feel and keep coming back. The beauty of consistency is that it is, by nature, a long-term goal and skill. And so it helps you build that self-discipline, another skill, over time. Making these practices a part of your lifestyle and over time, not feeling like a burden. Over time, engaging in these self-care practices, sustainably, will feel necessary and you'll actually look forward to them. Consistency is powerful and is an important way to build trust in yourself, an essential part of your advancement journey, step by step. And I'm here for you, supporting you along the way. 
Thanks so much for joining me today and see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Advancement Spot podcast. If you heard something today that helped you get one step closer to achieving the amazing life you want, and you'd like to learn more about working with me, I'd love to hop on a call with you to see how we can help you. So follow me on Instagram at Apply Yourself Global and send me an email at hello at applyyourselfglobal.com. I'd love to hear from you. Remember to subscribe so you never miss an episode, leave this episode a review, and share this episode with somebody you think needs a boost of inspiration and actionable tools to help them succeed. Thanks for joining me and see you next week.